Okay, I think we can give uh, Mijun co-host access and start the presentation. And a brief apologies to Seamus Kent, Kent uh, his affiliation should be nice, not uh, University of Oxford, but that's the, the next presentation. Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes. Yep. And can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so my name is Mi Jun, and I'm from the Health Economics Research Center at Oxford. And today I'm presenting on how you can optimize your code in R. So um, why would you want to optimize your code? That's the question. So a lot of like health economic analysis that we do has have many like stochastic elements in it, such as like bootstrapping, um, GFAs, or like previously mentioned uh, patient level simulations. So that would usually mean we have a lot of messy and repetitive codes and um, these codes can be very computation intensive and require a lot of time to run. So um, optimizing your code has like two different aims. So one is to make your code more readable um, and the other is to actually speed up um, the running time of the code. So um, here I'm just presenting like a dummy example where you have to do bootstrapping. So imagine you have a data set with like 100 patients um, with their um, corresponding cost of treatment, for example. And you want to perform bootstrapping with 500 samples to obtain the standard error around the mean cost. So one, um, one way of doing it is to first set up this empty vector boot mean and you sort of run this um, sampling and calculate the mean of each sample repetitively, and you keep repeating this code 500 times. Um, uh, and in this case, it's sampling without, uh, as you can see here, uh, without, without replacement. So what happens if after all this copy and pasting, you realize that you should actually have sample with replacement? Uh, do you go back to your code and, you know, uh, edit them for 500 times. So I'm assuming no one codes like this anymore, but I imagine when you first start out coding, you might have faced this issue and yeah, fallen off your chair. So the first thing to embrace um, is the use of functions and loops, which I think based on your previous um, response uh, to as presenter's questionnaire, um, most of you already know about. So um, in case you're unfamiliar, uh, a function is basically um, sort of a wrapper around the task you want to perform. So you write um, your code as usual, but you wrap it within a function. And then what you can do is you can call, a you can use a for loop to call this function iteratively. So instead of having to repeat your code 500 times, you sort of just call the function um, 500 times within the for loop. And this makes it much easier to debug. And when you do find an error, you can just correct it once. So for example, in, pre in the previous example where you have to sample with replacement, you just have to change this line um, of code to say replacement equals to true, to true and it fixes um, the error. So, but what actually goes on within the for loop? So if we look, if we break down this code, what what we do first is we first set up this vector boot mean to collect our results. And then within the for loop, um, we sort of append each of the, um, the sample mean to this boot mean. What is actually happening in the background is um, your, it, it's actually R is trying to identify um, boot mean from your memory in the computer. And then every time it calls that, it has to resize the vector and then reallocate memory to it. Um, and that makes things a bit slow. So the other thing that's happening is that um, if you notice there's this variable i, which is your iterator, and that is actually, if you actually look at your global, sort of the variables in your global environment on the top right hand of your R student, you'll notice that your temporary, there's a temporary variable i being created um, and being updated every time um, this loop happens. So this is generally bad practice because um, what happens if, you know, for example, you have defined i elsewhere in your code, um, like um, i as like the discount 
discounting um, uh, variable. And then you use I somewhere else in your code, not knowing that you know, I has been um, sort of redefined by this loop. So to circumvent this issue, the, to, well, at least to circumvent the first um, problem of having you know, the, your vectors being resized and having to re reallocate memory to it, you can specify here in this case, like boot mean to be a vector of length 500. So you pre-allocate a vector that fits all the values you know that you want it to contain. That avoids the problem of having to resize and reallocate memory to it. Um, but then a better solution is actually um, this idea of functional programming. So some of you might have already used like this family of functions, like the apply family of functions, or even um, the map family of functions from per. So these are bas basically just functionals. So what they are, are they, they are a function that takes a function as an input and applies this function iteratively to a list um, that you define um, and returns a result in some form. So in this case, they are like for loops, but the for loop is actually run internally in C. So as you can see um, with this code, there's no need to predefine the vector for storing the results. Um, and also, if you look at your working environment, your variables, everything that happens within the functionals un, um, are within there. So the variables in the working environment are actually unaffected. And in the case where you want to do parallelization, this, um, which uh, I will sort of talk about briefly later on, this makes parallelization really easy as well. So the question is um, for this like functional looping, let's call it that, is it actually faster? So if we compare like the previous code where you're doing things iteratively in a for loop with um, you know, using like a functional for the L apply, it's marginally faster. And yeah, sometimes it's faster. It's not always that it's faster. So one thing to bear in mind um, is that with functional programming, the aim is not speed. The aim um, is actually readability of your code. And um, also to circumvent the problem of, you know, having your variables being um, accidentally modified in the global environment. Um, yeah. Um, so if you do want to achieve speed, then one thing you can do is um, to, so it, one thing you can do is to vectorize your code. So um, many of the operations in R are actually already vectorized. So what factorization means is instead of having, um, instead of working on each element of your vector individually, um, you can work on the entire vector. So in this sort of, again, like a very simplified example, when you want to add um, these two vectors up, you can do it element wise in a for loop, or actually you can just do like a vectorized computation. This is much neater and is actually faster as well. So, Going back to the example, um, the cost example previously. So let's say you want to test if within um, the data set, uh, your cost, whether each of the patient incurred a cost of more than 50 pounds, for example. So if I did this element wise computation with the L apply, you can see that the time taken is much more than if I were to just do a vectorized computation. So, the, so for vectorized computations, it, mo everything um, is passed into C. That's why it's much quicker. And then the other way to sort of speed up your code is to um, parallelize your code. I think um, some of the previous presenters have talked about this. So instead of, um, so by default, R runs your script as like one single process. So if you have like a for loop, what's happening is it's running the iterations one after another. But with parallelization, it's running several of the process processes simultaneously on like multiple cores of your computer. So there are several packages um, that can do this. So um, for example, the parallel package has the MCL apply, which is an extension from the L apply family. Um, the future package um, has, uh, in the fur package, sorry, has this like future map, which if you're already using map, you can parallelize your map functions quite easily. And there's also storage and, and some of these um, other packages. So 
they do have quite good um, vignettes um, or some of the like example quotes online, which I encourage you to look into if you do want to start paralyzing. So I've, so if you look at this sort of like paralyzed code, um, you notice that it's just changing um, my previous sort of L apply to, um, to you know, whatever parallel functions you want to use. So basically, if you, have, if you already have your function, um, if you already have your code written up using functioners, it's, it's like a natural extension if you want to do parallelization. Um, yeah, and it's also really you know, easy to change your code. But then you notice that in these two examples here, it's actually parallelizing is actually slower, which brings me to one of the caveats of parallelization. Um, which is the overhead time. So in each of the parallel process, what is happening is um, each of this parallel process has its own memory space and the data and package that you are using needs to be loaded across all of them. So there's a startup time that's required before actual computation actually occurs. So a lot of times you need to weigh up um, the cost and benefits of using parallelization. So for smaller tasks, like in my toy examples, they don't make sense because the time you need to set up um, the parallelization processes actually is more than the time you, you would save. Um, but then for really computational intensive tasks, like for patient level simulations, um, parallelization almost always makes, makes it faster. So other ways that you can optimize your code, uh, one thing you can do is to break down the task. So make your functions do as little as possible. So within the for loops, do as little as possible. So in this example, um, so previously when I was calculating the bootstrap mean, I had to call the cost column from the data frame um, in every single loop that was happening. But if I were to cut external, externally, I can sort of like define um, a, a vector df cost, which yeah, which pulls out the cost from the data frame externally. And then in which case, every time I run the loop, it is only using the vector and it's not recalling the column from the data frame. So you see there is this sort of like slight, you know, really marginal improvement in your time, but it is one way um, to speed up your code. Um, so this is like the concept of like dimension reduction. You could always do um, pre-calculations as well. So um, for example, if you have like a really simple simulation model where you're predicting the state a patient is in and within there you're performing like cost and qualities calculation in the cycles. Um, if you sort of have like a finite combination of states, you could always pre-calculate the cost and qualities for all these finite combinations. And then you just apply the pre-calculations after the simulation instead of having to you know, perform the cause and qualities calculation every time. So that would also speed up the code. Um, sometimes R is just really slow and you probably want to you know, use like C or Python or something else. And R has um, interfaces to all these other languages, via packages. So that's quite convenient as well. So to put all of that in context, I'm going to present sort of a case study of um, using um, some of the concepts earlier with a Markov model. Um, just to acknowledge that this case study is based entirely on the work conducted um, in last year's R for Health Economics Hackathon. And um, you can access the code from GitHub um, through the link. So this work is, has already been implemented in Sam Abbott's package Speedy Markov. He'll be presenting on that tomorrow morning, oh, sorry, Monday morning. Um, yeah. So, um, in, so I, the, in, in this example I'm presenting, we have a Markov model with 10 states um, with time homogeneous um, transitions uh, with all transitions permitted any of the states. So we are looking at two treatment arms. Uh, we want to run 25,000 uh, PSA samples and we want to run each of, um, each of the sort of like the Markov uh, model for 100 cycles. So here is an extract of the Markov model. So this is just like um, a non-executable uh, minimal 
code example. If you want the executable code, you can find that in the GitHub. So what is happening here is, so we first loop over the two, we use a for loop to loop over the two treatment options. And then we sort of extract the transition matrix um, for each of the treatment um, in this line. Next, we loop over the 25,000 PSA samples. And then again, we extract the transition matrix um, for each of the PSA sample here. And finally, we loop over the 100 cycles um, and we perform like the Markov calculations here um, in this part of the code. So this is sort of like the base case scenario. And on my computer, this took 16 seconds to run. Um, yeah. So let's consider using a functional loop. And in this case, I'm looping, um, using the L apply over the two treatments. So other than this change, the other change that I've made, um, that was made um, here is the dimension reduction sort of idea, where instead of just, um, having instead of having sort of calling the cohort vector internally within the cycle here i first pick out the cohort vector for the treatment um, within this section of the code and then when i look over the samples i i further pick out you know the cohort vector for that specific sample before using it um in the sort of like 100 cycles and that improved the time to 11 seconds, um, as you can see. So we were considering, like, so we have two treatments and we sort of like perform the function loop over the two treatments. So what happens if, you know, we have 25,000 samples, um, would it be even faster if we use the sort of functional loops over the, PM, over the PSA samples instead? And I mean, it is faster over the base case, but not over the treatment. So I think this, brings back to sort of, sort of one of the caveats um, where L apply, even though um, sort of um, it, it passes the for loop into, um, the for loop is written in C, but it's actually not meant to be a faster version. Um, it's not meant to improve speed. It is meant for like expressiveness. So it is marginally faster than the base case, but um, yeah, it is not always And here, instead of like um, using the function loop, we use like a parallelized version um, of that. And we parallelize over the PSS sample. And the results for this is that uh, it's quite similar to if you were to just L apply over the PSA samples. So, um, which brings me back to, you know, the caveat of parallelization, which is the overhead time. So in this case, uh, possibly, you know, the computation time for uh, the Markov model was, you know, not that significant. Uh, that's why the time needed to set up the uh, parallelization actually, um, you know, saves, doesn't really save you much time overall. Um, another sort of um, a variation of the code that we looked at was um, to perform like the functional loop over the treatment which we've seen actually improves time by quite, um, by like five seconds. And we've also reformulated the code to use um, vectorized um, operations within, uh, within the PSA samples. And um, the time actually reduces to nine seconds um, with the vectorized operation. So that is quite significant improvement. And lastly, we, perform the loops using, R using RCPP, which is to pass everything into C and make C run the loop. And that significantly improved the timing. So, I mean, I think the general takeaway is that while C is much faster in running um, a lot of these operations um, than, having, than in R. So if there's any way you can sort of vectorize your code or you, know, you can write some portion of your code um, in C, it, actually, it would actually make your code run much faster um, than any other tricks you can do with R. So in this presentation, I've sort of um, sh showed you some ways on how you can optimize your code, um, whether it's using functionals, um, whether it's vectorizing or parallelizing. 
um, the question then would be what should you be optimizing? So previously I mentioned that there's two aims of optimization. One is to improve readability 